Welcome to the Badger Dome. Today on the show, Michael and Steven will battle an Amazon advertising account for the first time they've ever seen. Wait, hold on, I gotta restart. No, no, keep going. Uh, I'm just gonna, I'm, okay. <laughs> uh, they'll be auditing an Amazon PPC account they've never seen before. They'll be critiquing campaign structure. They'll be analyzing account performance. They'll be identifying the biggest opportunities for missed sales, and of course, finding all of that nasty, wasted spend. Tune in now as we do a live Amazon advertising campaign audit. And of course, get all of the episodes at adbadger.com slash podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. Boom. Welcome. I think we've got a great podcast intro today, Stephen. We'll, we'll just we'll make a new podcast intro for every episode moving forward. <laughs> don't, don't quote us on that. Um, welcome, everyone, to the show. I hope you are having a fantastic January if you are listening to this when the show is coming out. Uh, we're doing something pretty cool on the show today. And just in case we haven't mentioned this, We have a really high standard to actually make an episode here at Ad Badger where we try to make it so that every episode, everyone listening can walk away with at least one actionable thing they can do to improve their campaigns. And really, you know, the the pinnacle of that is an actual campaign audit because we're going to be auditing a campaign that we've never seen before, Stephen. Uh, Pre-game interview. How do you feel going into this campaign audit today? You know, I feel good. I feel warmed up. Uh, I've been doing my exercises of mental math, mental bid calculations. And so I think I should have a pretty good feeling of, of uh, you know, what uh, total sales about my total clicks are, you know, finding Boom. estimates. Uh, That's what I'm talking about. No, but <laughs> like Mike said, uh, we are taking a brand new account that neither of us has ever seen before. Um, going in completely blind. We know nothing about it, nothing about the history. Um, haven't even looked at like product listings we don't really know what they even sell um but we do this a lot uh we get i mean we've looked at hundreds and by this point probably even like thousands of different um accounts and campaigns because we just get lots of people just like requesting feedback uh, especially with like our own software users like we can mine or we can see all of their data by like um yeah so whenever someone asks like hey how come my uh click through rate so low or or my a cost is so high you know it's we can just look in and Kind of, you know, we we've gotten a good sense of intuition, I think, just over the years of of where, you know, we, we kind of have get a hunch, you know, of like what is the most probable cause. So, yep. yeah, so that's basically what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be diving in. We're gonna be looking at this account, uh, giving you guys our immediate first thoughts, first reactions, and then dive a little bit deeper. Start downloading advertising reports. We'll walk you guys through our whole process of what we do. And ultimately, we want to, you know, be able to show you basically how you can do this for your own account and just find, uh, you know, the the most important actions that you need to take in order to get immediate results. Absolutely. So this is a pretty typical account uh, and it's going to be representative of probably some issues that you might have in your in your campaigns, probably bumping up against some of similar barriers uh, to growth. So listening to this show should give you sort of what key areas to focus on. And of course, we'll be talking through how we would go ahead and approach it. Um, so we're going the way that we're going to record this show is we're going to be sort of talking through it. But of course, anything that's going to take us a couple minutes to look at and research, we're going to be thinking and talking out loud so that you're right along for the ride with us. And without further ado, let's turn on the American Gladiators theme song one more time as we jump into this campaign. All righty. So we are in the account and since October, this account has spent $14,000, has generated $40,000 of sales, giving it an ACoS of 35% over 812 orders. Uh, And that's the entire history. So this account just got started in October. Um, So right off the bat, what's your reaction to these figures, Stephen? Uh, well, first of all, I think everybody knows this, but, uh, 
w- this is actually Jeff Bezos' personal account that we are getting access <laughs> to manage. So, um, no, just kidding. We're going to be keeping everything anonymous. So we won't be able to tell you what campaigns are named, but we'll, you know, kind of make up other words to kind of give you an idea of, of what we're actually saying. But yeah, so this is, you know, about three months of data on it. And so they're spending about, you know, we'll call it, we'll round up 5000 a month, averaging a 35% ACoS. Obviously, this was around the holidays time. So I'm expecting those numbers of, you know, sales to be a little inflated, ACoS to be a little bit lower. Um, it actually looks like in November, November, they had like a 52% ACoS. Uh, and then in December, they had a 32% ACoS. So that cut uh, down by quite a bit just through the seasonality. So you can see that the 35% is, is pretty average, uh, or is, is a, yeah, it's, it's averaging a lot of different data. But um, the, yeah, the, my initial reaction is like, doesn't look bad. Um, that, you know, that performance, like, I don't really know exactly what their, their ACoS goal is. Um, and it's their ACoS goal is nowhere in the campaign names, which makes it difficult for, you know, if there's multiple eyes on an account or if someone's just stepping in, um, having your, your a target a cost listed somewhere is really easy. Cause you know, maybe they're, maybe their break even is like, you know, 10, 15%, maybe they have really tight margins and 35 is like a nightmare to them. That's right. You know, one thing that immediately jumps out at me is campaign naming structure. Um, you know, I just had a friend, he's launching a product on Amazon and he has like a he found a free freelancer and then he contacted me. He's like, Hey Mike, can you just take a look at what the freelancer is doing? Make sure it's all good. I opened up that account and the campaigns were named perfectly. Uh, it was as if this person, whoever the freelancer was, was a listener of the show and it was perfect. It had the, you know, ASP or MSP for manual sponsored product or automatic sponsored product. It had target A cost in all of it. It had the product in everything. It was so it was organized so well that I knew that that this was a leading indicator that the rest of the account was going to be pretty darn good, and it absolutely was. So already off the bat, anytime I open up an account and I see like the campaign naming system is not organized, not congruent, I'm almost guessing that the account structure, meaning the the way that the products are organized, the way that the keywords are organized, the way that the targeting is organized, will almost invariably be a little wild, uh, meaning it'll be a little loose, a little loosey-goosey, I guess is the clinical term for it. Uh, <laughs> and I don't know why I thought that was so funny, but it'll be it'll be a little too wild is what I'm saying. So already off the bat, just by looking at the naming system, which is very generic. So it's basically like product category one, product category two, product category three. It actually doesn't say like one, two. It actually just has the names of the product categories. It would be like basketball, baseball, hockey like that's how these campaigns are named and it just is a leading indicator that probably this account isn't set up as intentional as it should be that's my guess right off the bat right the next thing that i like to do um is whenever i'm jumping into an account i always sort it sort the campaigns in order of highest to lowest uh, ad spend because the biggest spenders are going to be the biggest movers and shakers and um, they're going to be the most important because they are the like they're, they're yeah they're the majority of your actual like spending. So uh, we want to make sure that spend is as efficient as possible. And so those are going to be right. the biggest opportunities for improvement. I mean, we had a different uh, episode where we talked about how to do your own self-performed like campaign audit. Uh, so you'll you'll hear a little bit of that repeat information here, but now we're just actually doing it on a live account. But go back and check out that episode if if you're um, curious just for like the backbone, the skeleton of what we're going to be doing here. Um, and so when I do that, the first thing that I see is, so there's four campaigns. The top three campaigns are that are spending the money are auto campaigns. And they are spending a total of about $14,300. And their one manual campaign got $8.80 of spend mm-hmm. <laughs> since November 18th, so about a month and a half. Um, so clearly... The uh, and then and then the other thing that I'm seeing here is so there's three auto campaigns. The biggest auto campaign is spending nearly nine thousand dollars a month. So if it's an auto campaign spending that kind of cash, 
it's probably not optimized because every search term's performing differently. And so that's why, you know, we do the RPSB so we can optimize the bids based on actual conversion rate performance. Uh, the other thing that I would would like to do then is I also sort by highest A cost to lowest, um, or I just look at the top three spending campaigns and, and look at the different A cost performances and also try to like, um, yeah, see if there's a big swing in the difference of the performance. And in this case, it is. Uh, one campaign has a 26% A cost, the other has a 62% A cost, and the other has a 200% A cost. Right. So. What are your thoughts on that? Like, what what do you, what's your immediate reaction to seeing that, Mike? So already off the bat, you know, I, I agree with you. Sorting it by highest spend or most revenue um, is often better than sorting it by just highest A costs because, you know, yes, there's one campaign that has, you know, I mean, it does have a thousand dollars in spend at a two hundred percent A cost. Um, so absolutely, that should be. Uh, you know, addressed. So it's really like, what levers can we pull on to get the biggest bang for our buck? Like, what's gonna, what, what, what can we move the most, the fastest, that's going to have its biggest impact? So, you know, what's going to be rel- what's going to be easier for us to optimize that uh, that campaign that's spending almost nine thousand at a twenty six percent A cost, or is it maybe that? four thousand uh, dollar ad spend at a 62 percent a cost so some of this is sort of goal setting and we would normally talk to the person about that you know what are their company goals uh, and then start drilling down but it's all about sort of what can we do to make the biggest impact as quick as possible so time is typically of the essence and time often compounds on itself so if we can fix something today we're going to be able to pay dividends on that sooner as opposed to like waiting a week for something and then having it, uh, you know, just sort of sit at that 60% ACoS. So without a doubt, I'm going to be jumping into these high spend, high revenue campaigns and seeing if there's any extra opportunity that we can eke out there because a 10% improvement on a bigger campaign is going to be way more impactful than a 10% movement on a smaller uh, campaign. So obviously we're going to want to hit everything, but... Mm-hmm. I'm going to add one thing to that. Um, just crunch some numbers. So to kind of prove Mike's point that optimizing the one that's spending nearly $9,000, even though the, the A cost is like 26% and you might be like, whoa, like that's exactly like what we want to be spending or whatever. Or maybe like, hey, our target's 20%, but we're not too far off it. Versus trying to get the, let's just say we were able to cut the A cost of the th- the $1,000 spending account in half. And we could take it for or the campaign. Uh, we could take it from 200% A cost to 100% A cost and be like, dude, that's that's huge. You know, not where we want to be yet. So you would basically cut your ad spend in half, uh, you know, so you could do that. So you would save 500 bucks there. But with the $9,000 spending campaign, if you were able to bring that A cost from 25% to zero, or sorry, to 20%, um, that would save you about 2,000 um, bucks. Just being able to bring that down five percentage points. Um, so... That's where, that's just kind of shows you where the biggest spenders are the most important to optimize before looking at just a small guy with big ACOS. Right. And ultimately, you'd want to hit everything. But it's really just, okay, what are we going to do first? Another thing I'm noticing when I jumped into the account, went over to advertising reports. There hasn't been an advertising report downloaded um, ever since a, a month ago. So there hasn't been a search term report. There hasn't been a targeting or advertise product report, anything like that over the course of a month. That's a long time to go without downloading a search term report. And I know for a fact that this account isn't like plugged into a tool or something. They weren't like doing it somewhere else. Um, So yeah, so I want to, I want to hit a little bit more of the campaign structure because campaign structure isn't necessarily something that's going to show up in a search term report. Um, it's not necessarily going to show up when you're only looking at spend sales and a cost. So looking a little bit more at campaign structure is where my mind is going. Cause I have some hunches that it's probably not well optimized and well organized, uh, which is sort of like a systemic thing that is going to impact a lot of other areas. Um, but also at the same time, I did download a, a search and report, um, but I wanted to just poke around a little bit more about the campaign structure. Um, 
Where, so, where's your yeah go yeah ahead. i was gonna say so with that let's uh let's actually click into that first campaign with the nine thousand dollars of ad spend and see what we find all right mike so we're here and the first thing that i'm seeing is 34 products in one ad group and only one ad group in this uh yeah in this campaign so they so they did break out their campaigns into different um product families uh but as you guys know i'm a big big uh, uh, proponent of the single product ad group strategy. So I'm going to open up the actual ad group and see the products because I want to see if they're all pretty similar, if the sales price is pretty similar, if they're performing at a pretty similar rate. Because I'm shaking my head. Yeah, you, you're already there. Shaking my head. Yeah, I mean, the chances of all 34 performing at an equal rate is <laughs> slim to none. But, you know, we'll, we'll give them the benefit of the doubt and, and see what we find. And if my... Google Chrome would just freaking load. I got to right. jump in. Whoa. I got to take over. Yeah, take over. But I'm seeing it now. Dang. So obviously we're keeping this person anonymous, but uh, I'll try to use an analog for all of this stuff. It is it is as if I clicked on athletic shoes campaign. And then inside of that campaign, it's as if I have men's shoes, women's shoes, shoes for eighteen dollars shoes for ninety dollars i've got maybe a basketball shoes or like a two pair of shoes <laughs> <laughs> yeah buying two shoes at yeah two two pairs of shoes at a time uh it is like running shoes and maybe basketball shoes it gift is, box of shoes i'm having a lot of trouble i'm also seeing a lot of titles that some are well optimized and then some are not um, I'm seeing a costs all over the place. I've got a product here with 9% a cost, another one with 86% a cost. You know, this is, I got one with 168% a cost. This is a perfect example of when you have products that are this different and you stick them in the same ad group, it's very difficult to optimize all these things all at once because I mean, even if you just think of the bid, like how much would you want to spend before you sell an $89 product? You know, if the ACOS is sort of 20%, that would be $16. I would want to spend $16 before I sell that $80 product. If the product is, you know, $15 and I want that same 20% ACOS, that's only $3 of spend before you get a conversion on that. So there's no possible way that these products with this price range should be matched up together. Not only is the pricing different, which is gonna make bid optimization very difficult, but also the products themselves are very, quite different, which is gonna make, um, yes, they're all sort of shoes. However, there's very different types. There's a lot of variation in those shoes. So again, you know, I'm shaking my head over here. Uh, this is definitely causing, and don't forget, here's what's crazy. This campaign ACOS was 26, but I just listed off some th some areas with pretty pretty significant spend. You know, of this eighty seven hundred, you know, ad spend nine thousand dollar ad spend for the entire campaign, we've got eleven hundred dollars going at eighty six percent. You know, we've got um, you know another one hundred sixty six dollars at one hundred twenty two percent. Another one two hundred fifty dollars at a one hundred sixty eight. I got a seven hundred dollar one at a 400% ACoS. So if you were to take just these, like everything over 100%, that's quite a significant amount of ad spend that's really unoptimized, that's gonna, that you cannot bid optimize because it's all in the same ad group. Okay, that's my rant on this campaign structure, Steven. <laughs> I was how, do, how do we fix it? How do we fix this? Well, I was gonna say a couple more things here. Um, Let's One, bash if, it a little bit more, if you, and if then you let's to, fix it. If you were to sort this in order of like highest A cost to lowest A cost, just a sad group, you would see one with almost a 600% ACoS, one of these products, um, that has only $100 of ad spend. However, if you sort by highest ad spend, you'll find that the biggest spender in this uh, ad group with uh, spending almost $1,500 has a 50% ACoS. So like Mike said, and the, like the 26% might look good at the surface level, but you dive in and you see the number one spender is at almost 50% ACoS, the number two spender is at 86% ACoS, um, and then the number five spender is at 400% ACoS. Um, and they are at different, price, different prices. They're all getting about the same cost per click, 
which really doesn't make sense that your ninety your ninety dollar product would be getting the same cost per click as your eighteen dollar product. And the eighteen dollar product is the one that is the second highest spender in this ad group with eighty six percent ACOS. So we definitely want to optimize them differently. The other thing that I would do to just prove the point here, um, if you sort in order of highest sales, you'll see that the top two products with the most sales have 10% ACoS and another one with 10% ACoS uh, and another one with 7% ACoS. So those are the ones that like you, they should deserve a higher cost per click, a higher bid than the other products. And so that's what single product ad groups allows you to do. Um, yes, th those are my thoughts here. Right. So actually, so if I'm a listener out there and I kind of have like this messy, because because here's where we are right now. We looked at campaign naming systems just to get the pulse of everything. We looked at spend, ACOS, sales, just to get the pulse of everything. We jumped into that highest spending campaign first because that's where the biggest levers of change are going to be. Like we can change it significantly by fixing the biggest spender. Uh, then we look at this auto campaign structure and it's kind of messy and what is our recommendation like how do we fix this like how would you actually go in and actually take steps to fix this like are you would you just pause the entire thing and reboot it would you just sort of like take what you can put that somewhere new like how would you actually approach this great question um See, another big benefit of having those single product ad groups is even if you had a poorly, poorly performing campaign, but it was at least organized well, um, you could RPSB out of that. Like you could take that data because you can line up each search term with each product that converted because, you know, you can see which ad group it came from. When they're all in the same ad group, you can't identify which product actually got the sale from which search term, if that makes sense. There's, there's no way to line up converting search terms with which product actually got the sale, uh, you only know which ad group that sale came from. But if there's only one product in the ad group, then, then it makes sense. Um, so yeah, so that is, is uh, in this case, I might just start, I mean, I would, I would want to download the search term report and, and see there's probably enough generic things that I could add to all ad groups once I do create a new campaign. But yeah, I would, I would end up just making a new campaign from scratch, uh, single product ad groups at this point. Mm -hmm. Right. So that is definitely one option. What goes on if you if you were, I would actually approach this a little differently. Um, what I would do, I'd be a little hesitant to pause the entire thing. What I would try to do is, is start seeing like what's similar, like trying to grab maybe some of those similarly priced ones that are in common and, you know, I would probably peel some of those out and stick those into their own areas. Some things, some things are close. Uh, like some things are close. And I know this is sort of, I don't know if we've talked about this on the show, but I, I sometimes do like to group very similar products in the same ad group. Uh, like if they're a similar price point, uh, they're competing for nearly all the same searches. Sometimes I do like to put those in the same ad group. Yeah, uh, same here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. keep those together uh, and then I would look for the different like the different ones and I'd peel those out and put those into a, a new ad group and then of course pause them from this one um, I think you know the end result of that like if we if someone did it my way and then someone did it your way in in like a week from now it's essentially the exact same thing um, right so definitely cleaning this up and I guess how do we know like what would be the expected result of doing that. Cause I, I always like to think of it in terms of like what's observed and what we observed is like auto campaign structure is messy, a lot of different products, different pricing, different A cost, a lot of problems with that. To fix it, you can either just pause it and reboot it or you can like peel the things out and create new ad groups or even a new campaign, depending on how many ASINs you have. This account only has about 50 or so ASINs. Um, so I probably wouldn't need to, you know, create dozens and dozens of campaigns. Um, but either way, what, what would be the expected result of doing this? You would hit, the expected result would be being able to hit your target ACoS on every single product in there. Mm -hmm. Um, let's just assume for the sake of argument, their target ACoS is, we'll just say 25%. So this campaign is at 26% and it's like, Hey, we're on target. 
However, you are overspending on like the top, I think the top five products were all overspending. Um, so you're blowing budget out there and then you're not able to spend, maybe this campaign had a budget limit and it runs out of budget by noon or by the afternoon. And now you can't actually spend more money advertising the products that were performing extremely well at like a 10% ACoS. So you want to cut the spend on the high spenders and uh, contribute more of that to the low spenders um, so that all of the products are hitting the same target ACoS. So that would be the goal there. Absolutely. So again, that would that would allow us to do bid optimization. That would allow us to sort of sculpt our traffic to be sure the correct search terms are going in the right spot. So already, you know, we're making some good gains here. Um, so now that we've talked about the structure of this auto campaign, where do we go next? The next big one is we got to check out their actual auto targeting options and see what are they doing with their bids there. So let's jump over and take a look. Couldn't agree with that move, Steven. That's exactly where I was going. So we talked about the campaign structure uh, and then we jumped over to the targeting settings. So we're talking about the auto target you know, the four auto targets, close match, loose match, substitutes, complements. We want to look at that. We want to probably download a search term report and see what's been triggering here to see if there's anything that we can sort of wholesale block. The thing that complicates this slightly is the fact that there were so many products inside that ad group that not only does it make analysis difficult, but it makes bit optimization difficult. It makes all these things difficult. And we're going to feel that as we look at these search terms, because it's difficult to know if we look at a search term, was it good or bad because like because of the messy structure, meaning if it was somewhere else and we were able to bit optimize it, could it have actually worked? Like if I'm looking at a search term here with a 200% ACoS, is that only because of the messy campaign structure? Like what, if that was actually fixed, it would actually be a totally relevant search for the right product, but because it was getting clicks for the wrong product, now the ACoS is through the roof. So this is something that that honestly I think is is pretty difficult to understand. Like it, it's pretty difficult, but basically, it it makes it so that you don't know if a search term was is it really bad or was it just bad because it was showing up for the wrong product. Um, which makes optimization difficult. Mm -hmm. That's a really good point. Um, any like quick tips or work around work work arounds for that? If I was optimizing this account, uh, definitely segment out those products, make it more organized for that auto. When I would get to the search term analysis part, I would hmm because if you if you look at it. Again, close match and loose match are doing well, 17, 16%. So those are the searches. The searches are generally okay. What I would want to do is actually go in and actually see, you know, I want, I want to be aware of that. So I would go into this auto campaign and I'd look at the actual searches that triggered it. And then I would almost run a, uh, a spread on that and actually see like how many searches came in under that average and how many came in over that average. Because right off the bat, it looks like uh, substitutes performed really poorly at a 75% ACoS for this account, for this uh, campaign, meaning when this product was shown as a substitute, meaning, hey, instead of buying the one that you're looking at, buy this product, you know, buy this account's product instead, it actually did much poorer than if they saw it on a close match or a loose match. So there's some interesting things here um, to consider. As I was say, yeah, let's let's circle back to the actual search terms when we when we get into the actual reports. Um, for now, I just want to say something that's glaring at me right in the face, and it's just peeving me so much. Um, which is Ooh, that between, between the four auto targeting options, um, again, what do you think I'm always going to do? I'm going to sort in order of highest spend to lowest spend to say which one's the biggest mover, but before we do that, all four of these have the exact same bid of $2.05. And Ouch. when we look at the highest spender, uh, like Mike said, it, it was actually substitutes, which is the worst, which is basically it's, it's an ASIN targeting. It's a competitor ASIN targeting 
uh, option, um, and that is performing at a 75% ACoS. So again, you look at the campaign as a whole, and you say, oh yeah, it's 26% ACoS, or right on target, and yet the majority of your money, you're you're overspending. You're targeting bad bad ASINs, and it's or they're just not performing for for your products, and so extremely high ACoS. Meanwhile. You've got this other one, uh, Close Match, which is usually the, the best performer, um, is at 17% ACoS, so it's under. But Mike, between those two, which one has the higher CPCs? Oh, sorry, you didn't have the column set up yet. I, I uh, no, on. no, no. Yeah, uh, I'm actually like, <laughs> I'm, I'm actually like, uh, like that's a lot of spend. That's almost 9,000 in spend to have the same bid for all of them. Mm-hmm. Um, but the higher CPCs, what is that? Uh, I didn't, I haven't ran the column yet. I haven't added it. Sub- substitutes. Yeah. It, substitutes is actually the highest CPC in this, in this ad group. Right. So, so because there was no bid optimization going on, so this is like a general activity thing because there was no bid optimization, all four of these auto targets have the same bid. And that means it's a, I mean, it's a big bid. It's, it's you know, two dollars. Uh, relatively, you know, relatively speaking, that's that's probably in the middle range. Um, but yeah, that's it's a pretty aggressive bid, and to have CPCs land, at a, you know, about a dollar fifty for that worst A cost, toughest auto target. Yeah, that that's it's pretty rough. Well, yeah. Then uh, then you see we got some other auto targets that are seventeen, sixteen percent. Um, you know. A cost, so those ones are doing really well. Um, however, you know, you we really again to go back to what we said at the beginning, you don't want the majority of your money to be spent on an auto campaign, anyways, because if we were to even break those open and see which of the ASINs, because just like drop the bid on on that substitutes, um, could ha- could just cause you to stop targeting the only ASINs that were getting sales, and now you're only targeting the ones that weren't getting sales. So that's why we right. really want to do the RPSB whole thing. Um, but while we're still in this ad group, Mike, and while the search terms tab is sitting there with a bright blue new badge next to it, uh, let's take a look at that and just see what are the search terms that are coming through in this uh, this ad group. So we are now in the search terms tab of this ad group, and. I'm seeing something, and I'm not a fan of it. Me <laughs> um, neither. There's so there's a couple things here. There's a, there's a couple reasons for alarm. One, they're suffering hard with without bit optimization. They're suffering hard by having all of these products in the same uh, ad group, and they're, it, it's it's pretty hard to watch. So basically, there's. Just the bids are way too high on, on the terms that they, they on the you know the four auto targets. Uh, I mean the one two three fourth a biggest search term is a generic term that actually has nothing to do with their products. Quick question: and, what, do you, what do you mean by biggest search term? Uh, in terms of spend, so sort 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 of this by spend. You know what are the big movers and shakers here, and that fourth search term it's a generic search term and 392 percent acos and again without doing anything else this is just going to continue to bring in conversions at that hyper high rate uh like the conversion rate for this ad group is is about almost nine and this one's two percent so this search term deserves a much lower bid than a typical search term for this ad group. But because there's only auto campaigns, uh, or at least most of their spend is going towards auto campaigns, there's no search term graduation process. Like basically the way to fix this is if I see something in here that is, you know, it got a conversion, you know, it's only one, uh, but if this were two, you know, might wanna wait until maybe it got a second conversion. Either way, a great way to bring down this A cost and actually get, potentially get sales at an appropriate a cost for the search term is to do our psb so we've done our research we're going to peel out the search term we're going to stick it into a new manual as an exact and then we're going to add the negative exact match to this ad group and what that will do for us is basically allow this expensive search term that converted really expensive to give it a small bid 
and now we're not going to be spending so much on it. We're not going to be spending this super aggressive bid here. Um, so yes, so we're definitely feeling the impacts of having all of our eggs in an auto campaign, all of our products in an auto campaign. Um, so that that's that's my immediate result. So if I were to fix this up, definitely negative keywords, of course, definitely search term graduation. So the things that have converted would get spit out uh, into their own manual exact somewhere and they'd get blocked from here. So that's my first reaction from this. Yeah, my first reaction, again, sorting by highest spend. Um, the second highest spender had $105 in spend um, without a single sale. By the way, this is just for the last 30 days, not for the entire life of this campaign. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, $100 in clicks and not a single sale. So um, that's either... Now, it is a relevant search term. Uh, so they're either spending too much with $1.67 CPCs and they just need to pull back um, to a point that is, you know, better th and would like hit the target ACOS there. Um, this, but the top number one spender is actually an ASIN target um, mm -hmm. coming in at $117, 67 clicks and only a single click or sorry, single order. Um, so it has a 260% ACOS. So that is the biggest spender in this uh, ad group and for the last 30 days. And unfortunately you can't negative ASIN in an auto campaign. So mm -hmm. we actually talked about this, I think it was last week's episode on the RPSB 2.0. And we we talked about, you know, maybe be, the workaround instead of trying to, because you can't negative ASIN auto campaigns, is turning off the ASIN targeting options and then just running category targeting campaigns because there you can negative ASIN. Yep. So that and could you be, know it's, yeah. yeah, yeah, go ahead. And it gets even crazier because... Uh, we had talked about how the poorest performer was actually substitutes. So that means these are products very similar to the one that they served, um, just a competitor's product. The product that they got the most spend for in the last 30 days is actually a really strong product. Uh, it has, you know, the four and a half reviews, uh, so four and a half stars. So it fills up uh, some of that last star. It's got 52 answered questions. It's got over a thousand ratings. Uh, it's priced pretty darn competitively. Um, it's got a lot going for it. So they're spending the most money uh, in like the, the biggest ASIN uh, target that they're appearing for is actually a really competitive target. And there's no way to stop it from sort of bringing down this auto uh, ad group unless we actually turned off, uh, you know, substitutions and then we just ran it through a category targeting uh, or a brand targeting because then we would be able to save this account quite a bit of money. We'd be able to improve the overall ACoS of this account quite well. I mean, this is the biggest auto target, the, the auto target that spends the most in the biggest ad group. And if we can move this lever, if we can sort of bring down all of these clicks that we're getting at 75% ACoS, imagine what impact we can do in the biggest auto target, in the biggest auto ad group, in the biggest campaign, if we can bring it from a 75% ACoS, maybe to where we want it, to a 30% ACoS, and that's how I would sort of approach this. Basically, this is screaming out at me that it needs some control for the substitutes, and one way to approach that is to actually just completely turn it off in this auto and actually run it uh, and run a brand or category targeting run a category targeting in another campaign so that you can do negative ASIN and you can bid specifically for this specific ASIN. Um, so yes, that's probably how we would approach this. That's, that's how I would approach it. I don't know about you, Stephen. Yeah, no, I'm right with you there. Um, and the final thing I'm doing here is I'm just sorting out um, now by number of, or yeah, highest sales to lowest sales. And when I'm doing that, I'm seeing that like basically the top 20 or even 30 converting search terms that are basically generating, uh, I mean, quick mental math, probably half of the sales here, uh, all have extremely low A costs, pretty much are all under 10%, some are even under 1%. Um, they're all branded search terms uh, for this brand specifically. So we see now that the 25% A cost was actually a you know, it was, it's kind of deceiving because it makes it seem like, oh, we're doing really well. We're right on target. Um, but meanwhile, it's just branded searches that are basically saving this campaign as it is. Um, and so what I would recommend doing, uh, especially when you are doing the RPSB, is um, this auto campaign 
you should know, like you should have your, like, it's not, it's the purpose of an auto campaign, at least in our strategy is to collect uh, market research and, and collect converting data. Uh, you should assume that your own brand is going to convert for yourself. So uh, we do recommend bidding on your own brand. We have a separate episode about that, but I like to recommend actually putting your own branded keywords in a separate campaign and then having a different campaign with your more like generic keywords so that the performance of your brand um, doesn't, you know, inflate your, uh, your results and, and make it seem like your campaign's doing really well, even though you just got more branded traffic that month. So the other nice thing about that is maybe with your, with your own brand, you're targeting a 10% ACoS and you're trying to be a little bit more profitable on it. But with the more generic things, maybe you're okay with going, if you're, again, if your break-even target's 25, you're okay with targeting a 40% ACoS on some of these more competitive searches just in order to like climb the, the rank there. So you can, you can break out that different spending strategy. Mm-hmm. So Stephen, we've been, um, this podcast is going on almost 40 minutes at this point. Um, you know, I don't know about you, but when I actually like sit down and do a full campaign audit, uh, like one that people are actually paying us for, it usually takes me about four hours, uh, give or take, depending on the size of it. So like you can already see, you know, the time for just this one, you know, this one campaign in this one ad group. Um, so I, I just want to be, you know, sort of mindful of, of the time here. So far, the big takeaways of this are naming systems, got to clean it up. Got to name your campaigns properly. Product, targeting type, so like the campaign type, maybe a target A cost in there too. Any other notes, descriptors. Um, go into the highest spending campaign first because you can often move the biggest lever there. What we noticed was that this auto campaign was really messy uh, because it had a lot of different products with different prices, different A costs, uh, competing for search terms that were, you know, maybe relevant for one, but irrelevant for another, um, noticed that the auto target information told us that substitutions was really killing this account. And we went into the search terms and noticed that, you know, that 26% ACoS, which sounds pretty good, was actually just being totally carried by some branded terms that were, you know, doing like five, 10% ACoS really, really well. So we talked about some ways to address that. As we sort of wrap up this episode, what else is on your mind for this ad group? Like there's so much opportunity in this ad group. Yeah, uh, there definitely is. Um, I, I, I feel okay wrapping it up there just in the interest of time so that we don't keep everybody here for four hours. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like you said, the, the summary would be like, um, you know, to go back to our episode on like the seven deadly sins of Amazon PPC optimization, like there's definitely some gluttony here going on where it's kind of just everything just lumped in together. All these products just lumped together in a single uh, ad group. Um and then also some sloth going on, um, not really, you know, not really optimizing the bids or the search terms, and, and taking the time to create good manual campaigns. Um, actually, one thing I do want to do really quickly uh, before we move on is I, I just want to look at that one manual campaign and see what they actually had going on there. Uh, if they had keywords, if they why I only spent eight dollars? Okay, yeah, this is actually just this is just a sponsored brand manual targeting campaign. Um, with just five keywords, uh, with pretty conservative bids, bidding on competitors, brand names. So yeah, that explains. So yeah, they didn't really have any manual sponsored product campaigns going. So that's a big, big no, no. Uh, but yeah, Mike, do you want to take us to the next segment? All righty. The last thing that uh, we would do is definitely look at some, maybe some placement setting data. It'll probably tell us the exact same story of the four auto targets. Um, jump over to advertising reports where you know, you'd know you look at the search term report, uh, maybe the advertised product report, placement reports, um, things like that, which would Again, what we're doing, if you're, if you're sort of visualizing this, we start from like a 30,000 foot view, we get a little closer. We say, oh, hmm, that campaign spent the most. 
Let's dig in deeper. Zoom in closer. Okay, well, you know, it's got a 26% ACoS. Let's actually see how all the individual parts of this campaign are behaving and are performing. Zoom in a little closer. You find that maybe the structure isn't so uh, terrific. You find that some of the targeting is behaving, you know, vastly different. You know, one has over 70% ACoS, others has, you know, almost like a, a third of that. So we're, we're dealing with that and you dig in even deeper to the search terms. And now we're sort of getting even more granular in the advertising reports. Uh, I would definitely go and find some really big offenders in the search term report. I try to see if advertised product report, uh, if there's any like really big offenders for products. And again, it's going to be difficult to analyze because you don't know if if it was just a poor product to advertise or if it was just poor targeting. So it's a little bit of a, you know, again, like if you set it up poorly, it makes other things more difficult. Uh, so definitely, you know, if I had to summarize this campaign in just a single sentence, it's basically falling victim to a busy and noisy automatic ad group structure. And that's sort of, you know, where I, you know, that's, that, that's sort of the takeaway that I'm walking away with. And the way to fix that, of course, is to break out this, these products into separate ad groups. Yeah. And it probably wasn't a, this campaign, this live campaign audit probably wasn't super interesting to, uh, you know, experienced, um, yeah, Amazon PPCers or people who've been listening to the podcast for a while because it was really just critiquing um, a few auto campaigns. And I'm sure there are a lot of other questions like, well, what if they had like hundreds or thousands of manual campaigns going? Like what would a campaign auto look like from there? Um, one of the things that, that definitely would have been different is uh, if, if, if I was just trying to like jump in and do CPR on, on a dying account and try to save it, the first thing I would do is download a, a targeting report um, and basically do the same thing we, we, we've just been doing with those, with the products and the ad groups, with the actual like search terms that we were looking at. But I would just sort that report by the biggest spenders uh, and look, you know, there's probably a lot of keywords that we have um, or even just auto targets that we have that are overspending and not performing. So I would just go through and just um, pause or maybe even archive a few of those. Uh, it's possible that during, you know, your keyword research process, you dumped a lot of irrelevant keywords in there that just need to be archived. Um, the other thing I would do is get that advertised product report, kind of do the same similar thing. Um, I would actually, what I like to do with advertised product reports is I'll create a new column and it's just conversion rate column and it's orders divided by clicks. And I'll look at the ones with the lowest conversion rates or, or maybe ones with no conversions at all, but like a ton of clicks. And sometimes it just, those products just like are not performing. They have horrible reviews or no reviews. And it's just like, hey, we just got to not advertise this because it's just it's not going well. It's just focus on the advertising, the ones that are converting. Um, so yeah, so I mean, that's that's the next kind of big thing. Uh, so for me, final me recommendations for this account is get those manual keywords uh, campaigns going. Uh, separate your branded keywords into your own campaign so that you're getting um, you know realistic numbers with with how your account's performing and. Yeah, I think if, if, if you just did those few steps, you would see a huge difference in the performance of this account overall. Yes. So let's get a quick recap. You know, we started this campaign audit, we started this account audit, not really knowing how it would pan out. And we went where the data brought us. And one area that it brought us was this automatic campaign. So if you have an automatic campaign that isn't performing well, this is sort of hopefully our thought process is helpful in, under, in better understanding how to really think about Amazon advertising. So we looked at naming systems first. That's always got to be clean. We have a lot of episodes on that, um, about campaign naming systems. If you search campaign naming systems, Ad Badger, or it'll be in the show notes, check that out. Uh, got to name your campaigns. We went into the highest spending campaign and we noticed that there are way too many. There was a hodgepodge of products. I think the uh, professional term is it was set up too loosey goosey, where you had different products that were sort of not related to one another. You had different pricing for these, vastly different ACOS, and that messes with your data. You can't really optimize your 
ad group in your search terms and all these things because you don't know if it was a misbehaving search term um, truly or if it was just showing up for the wrong product because of poor uh, setup. So you got to fix that. A way to fix that, you can either do single product campaigns or you can do uh, just sort of group very, very similar ones, you know, similar prices, knowing that the search terms would all be similar for both of them. Break those out. Uh, diving in deeper into this campaign, noticing that substitutes really misbehaving, really not doing well. Uh, and since you can't fix those in auto because you can't really negative ASIN, you definitely have to do bid optimization here no matter what and potentially take it even further and just turn off substitutes and instead opt for manual uh, a manual product targeting ad group. And what that will do is that that'll allow you to bid optimize all those product targets that'll allow you to negative ASIN over there. So that's definitely an option for this account based off how poorly the substitutes perform is probably a pretty smart idea. And then got to look at those search terms, sort by amount of spend, look through them. And here we were taught the lesson that actually this entire campaign is being held up by branded searches. So we talked about some strategies and we've had, we have some episodes too on branded, um, search terms and how to manage those we'll link to that in the show notes too you know should you segment out your branded searches so that you can bid optimize them separately compared to the generic searches so i think ahead of this this account definitely has to consider that you know they have to ask some big questions about why do our products not perform well when presented as substitutes why is it that our non-branded traffic isn't converting that well uh, and those are sort of bigger level Amazon conversations to have to really take this to the next level. So maybe it's some price optimization or some uh, picture optimization, titles, you know, whatever it might be. That's definitely one thing that's going to amplify this Amazon company for sure. Um, Steven, post game recap. How do you feel about that campaign audit? I feel pretty good. Um, there's a lot more that we could say. Uh, I mean, a lot of those products themselves could use some product listing optimization. I mean, there's just so much, so much room for improvement. Um, yeah, uh, but I, I love kind of doing this stuff. I love jumping in, fixing accounts, and seeing just a huge just reversal in the trend and and uh, sales go through the roof. It's it's fun. Yes, you know we use the American Gladiator theme this entire show. Uh, and as we play it out here too, uh, we could have definitely used like a detective theme song. Maybe we'll do that next time uh, on the show because we really are. It's like sort of like asking ourselves, well, what should I look at first? Let me dig deeper. Let me dig deeper. And that is really the story of PPC optimization in general. What, why are the numbers the way they are? Let me figure that out and then let me go ahead and improve those campaigns. Uh, as we're played out, you can get all of our episodes at adbadger.com slash podcasts. We'll see you next week, everybody. Have a good one.